Hi folks, thank you for visiting my video. I have another exciting demonstration for you today. I am going to do a walkthrough on how to connect your brushless DC motor controller to the actual brushless DC motor itself. So the main difference between just from the outside when you look at a direct current motor comparing to a BLDC motor is that the BLDC motor has more wires coming out from it. Typically you'll see these three wires. These are called face wires. And you will also see these wires these are Hall sensors wires that provide signal to the controller and release the energy needed to rotate the rotor. So these guys here are Hall sensors. When they're not part of the circuit, they look like these guys here. So unlike the DC motor, the brushless DC motor uses Hall sensors to provide electricity to the motor to generate torque or the rotation in the rotor. So what you see here in this example, you have three Hall sensors. The Hall sensors are placed in the air gap so that they don't touch any part of the rotor. So how does these Hall sensors provide electricity to the motor? Its job is to collect magnetic field information and provide that information to the controller now, depending on how they program the sequences of the rotation, it tells the controller to provide the uh, specific magnetic field to interact with this particular rotor to spin based on the information that these guys collect. So the BLDC motor has more electronics involved. It's a little bit more complicated in terms of how it makes the rotor work, but it's more efficient and it's more advanced than a DC motor. So here's a closer look at the controller. The one I have here runs on 48 volts. It has a current rating of 30 amps and uh, the power up to 750 watts. So if you're new to BLDC controllers, uh, these can look very intimidating. But if you've seen a couple before and you've worked on them before, these are pretty standard. The first group here are the core operational wires. These wires you need to connect them in order for the motor to operate, right? So the first wires within these, these, this group here are the face wires. They come in green, yellow, and blue. The other wires that is associated with the faces are the hall sensor wires. Typically they come in five wires. The first top two wires are the electrical wires. Again, it's positive and negative, and it provides a little bit amount of electricity to power the hall sensors. And these are three hall sensors that are connected. Each one is connected to each face um, of the electric motor here. The other essential wires are the lead wires to the battery. So these are it's red and black, so it's positive and negative. These two wires connect directly to the battery in order to provide the power it needs to provide the specific electricity to the motor by each of these wires. So the other uh, two wires that are typically uh, associated with controllers are the throttle wires, uh, throttle port, and they usually come in red, black, and green. And this is to control the speed of the motor through the throttle. Another wire that is associated with the throttle is the ignition wire. So this is kind of unique because usually the ignition wires also comes with a port like this, with a negative and a positive, et cetera, et cetera. But this, this one is a single wire. So if your throttle comes from a different port, you might have to do a special connection to make it work, which is the case for, for this demonstration. And I'm gonna show you how to connect 
the wires to the ignition switch to make it work. Now, you, all, you will also see these wires that come along with the controller as well. These are not necessary for the, the motor to work, but these are some extra stuff uh, that you might need for your project. Right, so these uh, here, we have the self-learning wires. Uh, what you can do is you can connect these two together, especially if you're working on a different motor. Connecting these together will teach the controller about how the motor functions so that it can activate accordingly. My throttle came with a switch, so it's not the exact match of the brushless DC motor. This is from another kit. And so here you have the throttle port that will correspond to this controller, but the ignition switch port here will not correspond to the controller that I have. So I have to do a little bit of tweaking in order to get electricity from the controller to here and back. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's get to the exciting part of connecting the controller to the motor. Here is the face wire from the electric motor. I am going to start with the blue wire. I'm gonna put it there like that. Make a connection. Boom. And uh, tighten up. I use this here. Boom. So now the two metal plates kind of uh, make contact, which allow um, allow the electricity to flow from the battery through here and through there. The yellow wire. Boom. So it doesn't really matter uh, the order or the position here as long as the colors uh, kind of match. This color matches that and that and that should be okay. The other two wires that I'm going to put together are the battery wires. One is positive and one is negative. The black one is negative. So I mentioned earlier about this extra wire here. This, this is the switch wire. And my switch wire here looks different than this one here. So you have to do a little tweak. You have to, to make a connection so that there's a uh, full circle of electricity flowing from here to here and come back to here. So for this one, in order to do that, I did a little tweaking here. So I'm going to put this at the bottom like this, right? And then eventually connect this wire to the switch wire. But first I'm going to connect the cable wires to the battery. Okay, so red will go on red, and then I'm going to position this one like so. At the bottom as well, and then put this one on top. You see it? Cool. And then, uh, check it in there. Okay, so now the positive wire to the battery is connected. I haven't connected to the battery yet because I'm still connecting the wire. We'll do that in a minute. Uh, the next one I'll do is connecting the negative wire to the battery. Cool. All right. So the next step is to connect the ignition wire here to the ignition cable. So here, what I did was I you have to you have to pull the blue the blue wire out, right? And you could insert a little like a uh, tiny screw uh, to to kind of push this out of the way. And so.
So this extra wire, as you can see, it's smaller than these two, and it provides a little bit of voltage through here uh, for the connector. In order to do that, to make the electricity go in full circle, I'm going to run this wire and connect it to the blue wire here. You can see that? Yeah, blue wire. And then, there's a yellow wire, right, that is part of the switch here. I'm going to bring the yellow wire by putting this cable, bring it around back in full circle to this yellow wire that is connected to the positive terminal here. The next port that we're going to connect is the sensor. Okay, so you just kind of look to see how it fits and it fits like that. The next one is the throttle, which you see here. Three wires match, and you kind of plug it in like that. Okay, so now you have a connection to the switch as well as the throttle. The rest of the wires here I don't need, so I'm just gonna not use them. Okay, so once you make the connection, it's important to put like the lid on this thing because these are metal and they are conductive materials. If something happened or when you turn on the motor, it runs and some metal kind of touch each other for some reason, you're gonna create a spark or you short the whole circuit. So you wanna make sure you put the insulator on top just for safety reason. All right, so I just showed you how to properly connect the controller to the motor. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to mix these up. You don't want to run the battery wires in, into any one of these here. You know why? Because inside this motor, there are the hall sensor circuit. So you, you might damage the circuit. And once the circuit is damaged, or one of these things is not working, the motor will not work. So you just want to be careful to make sure that you don't um, wire them incorrectly. But for the battery, you have to uh, connect them in series to meet the 48 volts controller and motor requirements. So in order to come up with 48 volts, I'm putting four 12 volts battery together. To connect in series is you simply connect positive from one end of the battery uh, to negative and then do the same here positive to negative right so uh, these batteries have the same kind of uh, volts and amp ratings each of these batteries uh, runs on 12 volts but it has like a uh, 7 amp hour rating so you want each of the battery to have the same amp rating so that the power can, can distribute evenly uh, when you run the motor, okay? And then uh, you do the same here. Eventually, you connect the outer edges, negative, positive, to the controller. And I'm gonna test the battery voltage level to see together if they have more than 48 volts. So as you see here, it's 48.5. Well, I'm going to connect the batteries together, the red cable to the red button here. Okay. I showed you how I connect the, uh, the switch connection here using this yellow wire. So I disconnected on purpose and I want to connect it after I connect the main battery. Switch is off, even if I turn it on, there's nothing on here, because there's no electricity running through. So, when I make the connection, I do a little tap, just in case. There we go. Now I'm turning on the switch. It has 50 uh, volts. For some reason, this one measure 50. So now it's on, off, on. Let's see if I turn on the throttle that this thing is going to run. Here we go. Whoa. It works. All right.
right. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it has been very helpful to you. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and share. And I hope that your project will be successful. With that, thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon.